Hi everyone, Mrs. Below here. In this video, I'm going to be going over the chapter 8 notes on single replacement reactions. Um, so there will be five types of reactions, single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and combustion. All are different types of reactions, but what we are doing is we are trying to predict the products of those reactions. So we're trying to figure out if we have, if we start with something and we know what type of reaction is, what are we going to make from that? And after you've done that, the second thing you need to do is balance the equation by following the law of conservation, meaning you need to have the same number of elements on either side of the equation. For these types of problems, when you have to predict the products, you will have the reactants will already be balanced for you on the left. So there may be numbers in the front. So like this would be provided or given to you, but you have to balance the right hand side, the product. So you would have to put this number here. Now, if you are um, forming a new product, Pretty much everything we're working with is ionic or um, stock system, so metal and a non-metal. Um, anytime you have to write um, a formula for a new compound that you made uh, in the reaction, you have to use the crisscross method. And that is finding the charges of those elements and then just using that number as the new subscript. So the first set of reactions are a little bit unique compared to the rest. Um, that's why we're covering it first. And those are single replacement reactions. So we're asking ourselves if the element that is by itself in the reaction, can it replace the element that is like it in the compound? And you're either going to have, um, well, one, you're going to have this chart here. This is called the activity series chart. And in that equation, you will either have two metals. So you're asking yourself, can this metal replace this metal that's already in a compound? And it would be two elements from this side. Or you would see two non-metals, such as the halogens. So if you see two of these, so if you see fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, you see two of those elements in a problem that's single replacement, you're going to look at this side of the chart. Likes can only replace likes. Nonmetals can only replace nonmetals. Halogens can only replace halogens. Metals can only replace metals. So there's never going to be any overlap between those two sides of the chart. And when we're looking at this chart, um, elements can only replace things that are below them. So for example, lithium, if it was alone, if it was by itself, it can replace any metal that is in a compound because it's at the top of the list. Uh, fluorine can replace any of these elements, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And if you remember back to chapter five, that's because fluorine is the most electronegative. However, um, if you're at the bottom of the list, so say gold here, if gold was by itself, it could not replace anything, but everything could replace it. And then same thing with iodine. Um, iodine cannot replace fluorine, chlorine, or bromine, but fluorine, chlorine, or bromine can replace it. So here are some example problems. So for this first problem here, I'm looking and I see the two elements that I have, um, I can already tell right away those are both metals, nickel and lithium, okay? So lithium is right here and nickel is right here on the chart. So I'm gonna be working on that side. So I'm gonna ask myself, can nickel replace lithium? And in order to answer that question, we have to look at the chart. So I'm asking myself, can nickel replace lithium? And the answer is no. Nickel is below lithium on the activity series, so it cannot replace it. And if that happens, you would just write NR for no reaction. 
Let's look at another problem. So here I can tell I'm going to be working with um, potassium and sodium. So on the chart, let's find potassium and sodium. Potassium is K, sodium is Na. So I'm asking myself, can potassium replace sodium? So can potassium replace sodium? And the answer is yes, because potassium is above sodium on the activity series. So this reaction will occur. I'm just going to fix this arrow. So that means that these two elements are going to switch spots. So that means that the potassium is going to kick out the sodium. So now sodium is by itself. And now potassium is with chlorine. Whenever you form a new compound, you have to do the crisscross. And so potassium is now with chlorine. So now we have to do the crisscross. So you would look for the charges of those elements on your periodic table. So potassium has a charge of plus one. Chlorine has a charge of minus one. Um, this one's really easy because if I do the crisscross, I still get KCl, but that's not always going to be the case. And what is also not always going to be the case is um, this equation is already balanced. Um, that would be the last thing you do. So there's one potassium on this side, and this left side will already be balanced for you. For example, like for the next question, I put a three there, and that's because it needs to be there to make the equation balanced. Um, so in this question, there's one K and one K on either side. So one potassium on either side, one sodium on either side of the equation, and one chlorine on either side of the equation. So this equation is balanced. All right, next we have one that has a polyatomic ion. So um, that's why I highlighted it in blue here. So in this situation, we're going to be dealing with these two metals, which is aluminum and silver. So aluminum is here and silver is here. So I'm asking myself, can aluminum replace silver? So can aluminum replace silver? And the answer is yes, because it is above it on the activity series. Again, elements can replace anything below themselves on the activity series, but elements cannot replace anything above themselves on the activity series. So this reaction will occur. So these two elements are going to switch spots. So Ag, which is silver, is now going to be by itself. Plus, now the aluminum is going to be with the NO3. So remember, NO3 is a polyatomic ion, and this is something that would be on the back of your periodic table. So aluminum has a charge of plus three. You can find that on your periodic table. And nitrate, which is NO3, that's on the back of your periodic table, has a charge of minus one. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the crisscross. So the aluminum has a one, but we don't write it. And remember, if you have a polyatomic ion and you have to put a number here that's not one, so like two, three, four, etc., you have to put the polyatomic ion in parentheses, and then you're going to put that number, which in this case is three, on the outside of the parentheses. Now, the last thing to do is to make sure this is balanced. So I can see that there is one Al or aluminum here, one Al or aluminum here. That's good. I can see that there are three silvers here, and there's only one over here. So to make it balanced, I'm going to put 
a three in front of that AG, which is silver. Now last is the NO3. So remember, this three in the front gets applied to everything that it is in front of. So this is saying that we have three nitrates, so three NO3s. And if you look over here, remember we put that three on the outside, this is also saying we have three nitrates or three NO3s. This equation is balanced. So if you're seeing metals of some sort, look on the left-hand side of the chart up here. Um, the only time you're going to use the right-hand side is if you're seeing these elements, which are pretty easy to spot. Um, in the last two problems here, you can see right away there's fluorine and bromine and chlorine and fluorine. So be on the lookout for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If you have two of those elements in the problem, then you want to look on this side of the chart. If you don't, then look on the left side of the chart. So again, I'm going to ask myself, can the element that's by itself replace the element that is like it in the compound? So in this case, we're asking, can fluorine replace bromine? Because those two elements are on the same side of the chart here. So we have fluorine and bromine. Can fluorine replace bromine? And the answer is yes. Fluorine can replace anything because it is the most electronegative. That goes back to chapter five. So a reaction will occur. So the fluorine, which is by itself, is going to kick out the bromine. So now the bromine will be by itself. Now, there are some elements you have to pay special attention to that are on the back of your periodic table. These are called diatomic elements. So something like Br, when it is alone, as you can see here with these two elements, when they are alone, they have to have this two subscript. And again, that only applies to the elements that are on the back of your periodic table that are listed as diatomic. So that's hydrogen, um, so that list includes hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and then all of the um, halogens. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If they are by themselves, they have to be written like this. And now the K, um, keep that written first because it's written first over here, is now with the F. K has a charge of plus one, F has a charge of minus one on your periodic table. So this one's pretty easy, this is just KF. And then the last thing we need to do is balance. I can see over here there's two Fs, but there's just one F over here. So to make them the same, I'm going to put that two in the front, which works out because we needed two potassiums or two Ks and we have two over here, and we also have two bromines here, and this two is in front of the KBr, so that's also two bromines. For the last question, we're gonna ask ourselves, can chlorine replace fluorine? And if I look on the chart here, um, can chlorine replace fluorine? And the answer is no, because chlorine is below fluorine on the activity series. So this one would be no reaction.